Hi, and welcome to the books I read in February. <laughs> this month, I read a total of six books, which was actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be, taking into account the amount of work I'm starting to have for uni. Out of the five challenges that we had for this month, I completed all five of them, which is it's a record. I mean, it's not a record. I also completed all the challenges last month, but you know, it's it's good. I'm happy with that. The first challenge and book I read was Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur. Rupi Kaur? Rupi Kaur? And I don't know how to pronounce her name, but yeah, by, by her. This was for the challenge Read a Poetry Book. And Milk and Honey is a poetry collection about kind of like womanhood and love and just growing up and also like bad stuff like sex sexual harassment, um, discrimination and that type of stuff. I had read another book of hers a few years ago by now. It was the other one, the one that she re released after this it is The Sun and Her Flowers, I believe. Uh, and that one I liked a lot when I read. I think I gave it like a four or five stars at the time. This one I didn't like as much. I gave it a two and a half stars. So I'm gonna count it as a... I think I counted it as a two on Goodreads. I'll, I'll put it on street screen anyways. And yeah, it just wasn't for me. It was... The topics were a bit heavy for me. And just the way it was written, it was like a bit repetitive maybe it was because it was her first book that i didn't like it as much maybe she like evolved slightly when she went to the sun and her flowers although i know my cousin read that for this month and she didn't like it uh so i don't know maybe it just depends on the time you read it or something like that i'm not sure the second book i read was art stopper the mini series no, wait, the mini comics. <laughs> Almost there. This was for the challenge, a book up to 150 pages. I think it was like 70 something pages. Um, so that's good. <laughs> I read it very quick. I read it, read it in one sitting, of course. Uh, and it was excellent. Just like the other art stopper books, it was pretty great. It was just like some more insight into Charlie and Nick's lives and how they come together. And also other funny stuff, like what if they were in Hogwarts and they were wizards and all that type of thing. Um, for those who don't know, Heartstopper is a graphic novel about Nick and Charlie, who are in high school and they fall in love. And it's just like them learning how their sexual, like learning about their sexuality, pretty much. So I give that five stars. <laughs> The first five stars of the year goes to Heartstopper. Not shocking at all. The next book I read was this one, which I actually have the physical copy. Felix Ever After. Uh, I read this for two challenges, actually, because in this competition, we allow for you to use the same book in different challenges. So I used this in two challenges, which were uh, a book by a black author and a book with a black main character. I definitely didn't need to look at the Excel to know that. <laughs> um, Felix Ever After tells the story of Felix, who is a trans guy whose dead name and like photos before he transitioned get spread in school in like this gallery and it's made very public which is something very disrespectful to do and it basically deals with him like kind of like how he reacts to it and how he grows from it because it like felix tries to find out who did it who posted those on school um and yeah, it's just, I don't have a lot to say. Uh, I mean, I had a lot to say when I read it, but now I, my memory is just kind of, oof. Yeah, I read it a, a few days ago, a few days, a while ago now. Um, 
yeah, it was. I really liked it. There was very interesting commentary on well, obviously transsexuality, but also um, like you not needing to know exactly what your sexual not sexual your gender identity is. Um, so like because uh, I don't know this might be a spoiler. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, it revolves around a lot around se- uh, gender identity and how you perceive uh, yourself and all of that. It also has some great relationships and I loved it a lot. I recommend it. I gave it a four star. Four stars. So almost a five star. Not quite. <laughs> I also forgot to say, but this is by Karen. No, wait. Kaysen. Oh, I wrote her name wrong. So the next book I am I read was Caroline, the graphic novel version, which was illustrated by P. Craig Russell. I didn't read that for any challenges. I just wanted to read it. <laughs> uh, Caroline is one of my favorite child childhood like novels and also movies. I loved the movie when I was a kid. I know there's like like there's like this joke of which kid were you the one that was scarred and like terrorized by caroline the the movie or the one who just was the weird kid who loved this movie and i was the weird kid (laughs) i loved it i was obsessed with it it was the movie that got me into animation um so yeah i had very high expectations expectations (laughs) um caroline is the story of this girl that moves to a new house with her parents and she discovers a door in her house that at first is blocked by stone but at night well not only at night but the first time it happens is at night at night um, the door opens to a replica of her house with what it's called her other parents i think that's the name Yes, the other parents, uh, which are rep- replicas of her parents, but instead of having eyes, they have buttons for the eyes. And it's awesome. <laughs> it's kind of like a terror. Well, it's a terror. It's for kids. I don't know if it's terror, but um, I expected a lot for the graphic novel because there is so much potential. I love the way they did the animation for the movie, like the character design, just the set. Uh, although it was made by Tim Burton. I don't know, I just love the way they did it in the movie. It's so creepy. And so like, I love this type of animation. Like it was made with stop motion using like plasticine, like little clay figures that they would move slightly and then take a photo and move a little bit more and take another photo. You know, stop motion. <laughs> um, and I just love the creepy vibes of the movie. And the graphic novel didn't have that. And because of that, I hated it. <laughs> like, there was so much potential to make the graphic novel something so creepy. Uh, and the illustrator didn't take that opportunity. Also, the illustrator added so much writing on this graphic novel. Like, instead of drawing the scenes so you could, didn't really need to read it, you could just look at the images and understand what was going on, it kind of just draw, drew something and then wrote, like, the entire lines from, from the book. And it's just like, that's not that's not the purpose of a graphic novel, come on. Uh, the, the drawings are supposed to tell the story, not the writing itself. At least that's how I view it. Um, and I also, I know this is being picky, but I didn't like the way he drew Coraline. She, I don't know, I'm just so used to the, to the movie again, like to the movie where she has the blue hair. And as, it's like, she's like the weird kid that wants to dress in like frog boots and stuff. And then in the, in the graphic novel, she's just like this basic blonde girl. She was like, I'm like, no, I, no. <laughs> Um, there was a scene, I don't remember where it was, but I will find it. Um, I also don't remember exactly what it was, but I know there was a scene around, like, when the hand... Okay, this might be a spoiler, if you haven't read Coraline or seen the movie. 
where the other mother's hand kind of comes off like a spider uh, that looked all right in the graphic novel like that was the vibes I wanted but then the rest of it is all just very basic and plain and yeah I don't recommend it just read the novel instead and watch the movie because the movie is pretty great the next book I read was also not for a challenge and it was called Lulu Anu which is a French graphic novel again <laughs> another graphic novel uh, this story is about Lulu who is a middle-aged woman who she has like three kids she's been married for ages and she's trying to find a job but no one wants to hire her hire her uh, because she hasn't worked ever since she got pregnant which was 16 years I think it was 16 years um, so no one wants to hire her and she kind of has this like midlife crisis and she just goes away <laughs> she just goes to a beach like to a beach city not city more like a town like a beach town um, and she, she's just you know she's just there <laughs> living and experiencing life um, I'm not gonna say anymore because it would be spoilers um, but yeah I generally when I finished this book I was kind of like unsure how I felt it, about it the illustrations of the book are really nice they are like this watercolor style it's really pretty really like it looks really calming really comforting um, and the story is also really intriguing because oh, I don't know, I, I don't want to say, I don't want to spoil it but there's something that happens in the beginning that you think happened to a person but it actually didn't and you're kind of like, you left the entire story thinking something happened to this character and it didn't and it's kind of like a, I don't know kind of makes you think this definitely makes you think about stuff, this book uh, it also really reminded me, well, really, the beginning, like the concept of trying to find for a job and no one hiring you because you have been out of the work uh, industry for years because you had a kid, reminded me a lot of the TV show, of the beginning of the TV show. Uh, I think it's called The Romance is a Bonus Book or something like that. Let me, let me search. Yeah, The Romance is a Bonus Book. It's a K-drama, it's a Korean television show. The main character, or one of the main characters, is going through something similar. And I really like this TV show. This TV show is great, I recommend it a lot, if you want. It's about um, the reading industry. Well, it's, it kind of is, it kind of isn't. She works for the she ends up getting a job in the book industry. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, so I recommend that if you want something else to watch and you don't know what, if, if you haven't seen this TV show, I recommend. Now, the last book I read, which was for the challenge, read a book with a different religion to yours. This was a big deception of this month, and it was What If It's Us by Adam Silvera and Becky Albertalli. Sorry, I was trying to read the name on the screen. Um, yeah, I started reading this book a long time ago. So I hadn't read like a lot. I read like maybe, I don't know, 10% of the book maximum. So it wasn't, I didn't miss much. Like the stuff that wasn't fresh on my mind, I didn't like miss like major stuff from the plot. But still, I had more expectations for this book for some reason. Like. I heard a lot of people love this book and they just love the romance between the two main characters and everything. I personally thought it was plain and really cringe. The dialogue was the cringiest stuff, like one of the cringiest stuff I've ever read. I think I this was not written for my age group. <laughs> it's so confusing, you know, because it is a YA novel and I am... I am not an adult, but I'm also kind of not, you know, I'm 22. So I am not an adult in theory, but I am still a very fresh adult. So you would think that this would be for my age group, like I would still like it. But I, I, I think the dialogue just, oh God, 
<laughs> like it was like the authors don't didn't know how teenagers speak and it annoyed me profusely i also didn't like if you heard that that was my dog um i also didn't like one of the main characters which <laughs> you know not good uh there was two main characters which is arthur and ben oh i forgot to say this book is about arthur and ben who meet in a post office when ben goes to mail his ex-boyfriend's stuff um and they kind of meet in this like very pompous way there's like a flash mob in the in the office in the post office and and they never get each other's names so then it's just the story of Arthur and Ben trying to find each other again yeah that's the start and I didn't like Arthur <laughs> here we go uh, Arthur was just annoying to me honestly he was written in the most stereotypical gay men type of way if you know what I mean like there's like a stereotype of how gay men act and he was that not that it's bad obviously there's like gay men that act like that and that's completely fine it's just the idea that they made this character into a stereotype that's bothering me and like it's kind of harmful to the community and it's something that i would prefer they had changed slightly they didn't have to change a lot of stuff about him but a few stuff they could have like a few things they could have changed and it would have made the character more bearable he also, it wasn't as bad when I was reading it myself, but then I listened to the audiobook. The actor, the voice actor that played him just didn't do a good job and I think I lost the character there. That's where my my dislike for him turned into hatred and it just went, oh, it just went from there. I started liking him a bit more by the end, but still i did not sympathize with him so yeah i gave that book two stars and honestly it deserved less <laughs> and yeah and nothing happened i don't know what else to say about this book nothing happened during it it was just a bunch of nothing it was like a give us nothing queen but in the bad the bad way the worst way possible and yeah i just won't i don't recommend it don't i am not gonna be reading the um, the second book that came out for this series um i know mia read this book as well during this month she also didn't like it that much i think she said it, the book was okay i think i disliked it more than she did but still she's not gonna be reading the second one i think that that's enough that has enough if you want to see if you want to keep up with our competition you can follow us on our instagram uh here the names on the screen um, the handles and the challenges for next month are this one's on the screen let me read them out i need to open the excel where is it hello okay so march is the normal month it isn't short like february so we have six challenges six challenges for this month which are book you've had for over a year book by a portuguese author book you bought because of the cover book with exactly 314 pages you know mia chose that one um book that won a woman's prize for fiction award and a book with flowers on the cover those are the challenges for march so if you want to um do them with us use the hashtag that's on the screen right now i don't remember the name of the hashtag so use that hashtag on your instagram or twitter and we will check it out if you you joined us and that will be the video for today i hope you liked it if you did please consider dropping a like and also maybe subscribe i would really appreciate it and i will see you next month